Ooh, that's nasty. What's up, everyone? So, long story short, when my grandfather and grandmother passed away, basically what they told me was any tools, any antique tools, any of that stuff that we have, we want you to have. Um, you know, really, in reality, I'm the only one of my cousins that's active when it comes to doing some trades. So, um, I, I, you know, for lack of better terms, I'm really the only one that knows what they're doing when it comes to tools to the extent. So I found this axe at our old beach house and it was in terrible condition. <clears throat> no edge, rusted all the way through and the handle, somebody had uh, taken the handle. There was no head left on it. Um, they had taken the handle, they had pushed it down, and then they had wedged it from both directions, and I found a dog tag in there. Like, that's how, not like a, a military dog tag, but, you know, one from, uh, like a tool or something like that. Basically, they wedged it so that it wouldn't fall off. Well, not acceptable, and pretty much this is what they had, one of the things that they had left to me. So, as you could tell, it's still very rusty. Um, but up here, it's starting to shed some of that rust. So I'm just going to put some water on it. This has been soaking in vinegar for a few days. And oh yeah, look at all that. It's just coming right off. This actually looks pretty good. basically what I'm going to do, the vinegar is likely reacting with the carbon steel that's in this, so I'm going to clean all this up with a wire brush, um, but wow, look at all that come off, huh? That's crazy. So I'm going to see if I can find, this is a really old axe, so I'm going to see if I can find any, uh, any markings or anything like that on it. Likely not, but we will see, um, and I'll kind of bring you guys along the restoration process of this. Uh, putting it a new handle on it and you know just bringing it back to life So I checked all over this there's no makers marks or anything like that So I don't know who makes this axe um, but I Know it's old. I sure know it's old but I'm not going to sharpen it just yet. Now, the difference is profiling is getting the edge established, whereas sharpening is actually defining the edge itself. Uh, so you can tell this is as dull as can be. I you know, don't do this, but you can basically rub your finger across it. There's no edge, period. It's about as thick as a penny right now. So what I want to do is follow, you know, use my file and kind of get this black line and bring all this down and then kind of start to work that back so that we have a nice even profile process when it bites in the wood it bites deep um and it has like a nice a nice thick piece here so that it bites deep and as it gets deeper it chunks out pieces of wood Now for fitting the handle, as you can tell, I made a little mark here with my pen where the furthest mark, the furthest uh, I can get the axe head on, and as you can tell, there's still some crow left. So if you look, right there is where it gets like real fat. 
So one thing I learned from uh, Wrangler Star and Buck and Billy Ray is where it gets real fat like that is to actually taper it more. I mean, as you can tell, that's a pretty thick shoulder and it's just too abrupt of a change for the ax to really sit down. Now, really only about that little bit sticks out from the top. And since this has an angled eye on it, you know, this, this gets taller as it goes up. The, the front here isn't sticking out of the top of the ax just yet. So I really wanna taper this down, take a rasp or a spoke shave taper that down and then bring it down 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 um so that it really can like sit hard and wedge onto the shoulder rather than hit that and then it won't go down any further wedge in here and with that I'm gonna use a little bit of this type on three and just a glue bot um, and I'm gonna use my rubber mallet and basically I'm gonna hold this upside down and tap it in that way I'm gonna put it on this piece of wood trim the top off hammer in the step wedge and then my axe head is on so basically what I'm gonna do just take this off sometimes a glue bot it's stuck but the reason I'm using type on three is it's longer it takes longer to set so it's not going to start adhering while I'm trying to put it in and I'm just going to spread this around you know get a decent amount of glue in there you don't necessarily need glue and some people use boiled linseed oil or, or something just as like a you know in a way like a lubricant to get that in there um, and it definitely does help so I would suggest it then Place this in the top. Guys, take this wood, put that there, and I'm just going to work on this slowly and just tap the handle in from the bottom. This does still have a little space on the outside there and there, but that's where a step wedge is going to come in. So I'm going to take the step wedge and put it basically right where that mark is. I'm going to do it at an angle so that it kind of fills that void. So. I just tend to start these really slowly because uh, they have a tendency of wanting to back out. But I put wood on the ground so it doesn't mar up the bottom of my handle. Now, if you see some splitting, as you can tell, there's some splitting on the top, splitting on the sides. That's not the end of the world. It's gonna split, you're shoving a wedge into it. As long as all around here, you're not seeing that split continue. For the most part, once you soak it in boiled linseed oil and all that sort of stuff, it'll be just fine. But as you can tell, it filled in that gap quite nicely. Is it perfect? No, but I now have basically fairly, Family heirloom axe. 